What's up guys, in this video I'll be going over my top 10 plugins for 2020. These are the plugins, I'll be going over why I think they're great and how you can use them, some secret tricks, and I'm probably gonna mention more than 10 plugins as well. As always, one of the first 500 commenters who win a free matching done by me, make sure to follow me on Instagram if you're human, but I'll shut up now and let's dive into it. By the way, I'm not sponsored by any of these, I just love them. So let's start off with Soothe. Soothe is a plugin that was recommended to me by my good friend Toby Green. He co-produces stuff for David Guetta and his own stuff is insane. It's one of the best out there. And what Soothe does is it's a dynamic resonance suppressor, which means basically that when frequencies gather and you get a harsh sound out of it, this one will naturally find those and dampen them however you like. We have this violin. There are a couple of frequencies that really stand out here. Let's slap on this and you can already see it working just at half volume here, without and with. The great thing about this is that you can decide where it's gonna hit the most, and there's a lot of stuff here that you can play around with. And I think the best way to learn this is just by testing it yourself. So for instance here, it's only affecting the top end. And the algorithm of this plugin is really, really good. So it does it in a very natural sounding way. So instead of you going into the EQ and doing it manually, this one does it really well for you. Cause I used to do it manually and this is amazing. So I love this one. Please try it out for yourself. You can use it on anything. If you have a lead that is sounding a bit too harsh, you can just test it out with this. Vocals work amazing. That's my first one. It's amazing. It does cost a little. I think it's almost $200, but definitely worth the money. Most of the plugins on this list are pretty expensive, but I'm going to do a video later on cheaper and free plugins, etc. But these are the best plugins, in my opinion, for 2020. So let's open the next one, which is Portal. It's from Output. Output does a lot of great stuff, so I definitely recommend them. I've only had this for a couple months, but I absolutely love it. Let's slap it on a vocal. This is how it sounds without. Tell me you love. Let's put it on. Tell me you love. What I love about this plugin is that there are so many presets Tell me you love. and they all sound different. Tell me you, love. you have different kinds of granular synthesis and you have a lot of control here over the smear and It's crazy good. For instance, I have this preset, free time twist. Tell me you love. It's just so creative. You get a lot of cool stuff instantly. The interface is amazing, super clean. You can favorite stuff and it's really, really good. So definitely one of the best in 2020 for creative purposes. This one was recommended to me by Summer Camp, a fellow Norwegian, and he just hit number one dance radio with a song in the middle with Alesso. So big shout out to him. Congrats. And this is how that looks. Super clean interface, but it's the best transcend shaper I've ever tried, especially for drums, but I use it on everything else as well. I've been looking for a good drum shaper and transcend shaper for a little while, and this is by far the best one I've found so far. And it's not the most expensive, and it has this mojo button, which is really fun to play with and can give some creative, unique effects. Let's see what it can do. For instance, let's drag in a clap. It's a pretty sloppy clap. Let's say I want some more attack to it. So that's on full attack. And without, it sounds really natural. With a lot of transient shapers, you get a lot of unnecessary clicks and it sounds a bit too digital in a way, but I just love this one. And it can add sustain really nicely as well. Just sounds really, really good. Let's make it shorter and snap. And the mojo button, which is really funny as well. Just makes things softer or harder, depending on what you want. It's really, really cool. And this was just with a natural one. You can do smooth and classic. And it's also on the bus setting, so you can do for kicks. It has another algorithm and you can make it tighter and more body with the snare. And it's just a great value for the money. Definitely the, my go-to transient processor, which I think is a necessary for all producers out there. So definitely recommend that one. I've been looking for so many years for a really good LFO panning tool that has automated and you can draw it in LFO and it's just a simple interface. And let's uh, put it on here. So it's really simple to use. You have all these preset settings. And... The algorithm is pretty good on this one. It sounds good. I would use like Tremolator from Sound Toys for like tremolo effects, but you can also write in how the curve is going to be and it's just... Really simple mix button here. It's just great. And I use it for almost all of my panning stuff. 
it's easy to add some extra flavor into your productions without having too much hassle when you can draw it in. When we're on to panning and phasing and stuff like that, the next one is called Shred Spread from Brainworks. It was also recommended to me by Toby Green. The algorithm and how it processes phasing and stuff is amazing. It really makes things wider than life without having any issues when you put it into mono afterwards. It's just one of those plugins that I think everyone should have. If we put it back to mono, no issues, like you would get with the host trick and stuff like that. So it's just a very simple plugin, a very, very good interface, easy to use. I think it's $100, but it's definitely my go-to when it comes to stereo widening. Let's head into synths. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that that is Diva. That is my absolute favorite synth of all time. It's a virtual analog synthesizer, but it's emulator, but it's not emulated by one specific synth. It has a lot of stuff in one. It's super versatile, sounds amazing and I love it to death. It's pretty expensive, $200, but it's so good and it has thousands of presets already built in. And a lot of the presets are emulated from others like the Moog, Roland. Interface is super easy to use. It's also a lot of fun to work with because a lot of the buttons you just don't know what they do. And the sound is just so fat. It can do modern sounds really well, but it also has fatter, older sounds as well. It has a lot of the Stranger Things vibes in it. It's amazing, I love it, expensive, but it's very worth it. The next one is called Magnetic, it's about $100 and it's a tape warmer. It does tube sounds and analog tape saturation emulations and I think it sounds amazing. It was recommended to me by Mesto. I've been using it a lot lately. It has that vintage sort of EQ sound and I just love it. And this is how it looks. So now I've just boosted pretty much everything. And this is without. It really drives the sound. It can add some nice harmonics to it. And it's just a nice way to get stuff to sound a bit more punchy and different. In my opinion, it sounds amazing, especially the EQs are great. It has a lot of flaws in the EQ, so it sounds a bit off, but in a good way. It's pleasing to the ear, in my opinion. It's not too digital and stale. I know I sound very nerdy when saying that, but I think it sounds amazing. It's very easy to use, a super simple interface. It has a lot of presets built in, and it's just a lot of fun to work with. It's definitely a good thing to have in your arsenal when you try and make bigger sounds. The next one is in the same ballpark. It's the SPL Twin Tube Processor. It's a super easy to use analog tape warmth plugin sort of thing. It sort of does the same thing, but it's only two buttons here, pretty much. It's very, very simple to use and gives direct, very, very good results. It just helps, the. it really helps in increasing the perceived loudness by adding a lot of other frequencies without really boosting the gain. So you get a louder and more compressed signal without compressing it, if that makes sense. It sort of feels like a distortion, but it's actually a saturation tool, which can add some more frequencies and make stuff bigger again. I love it, it's very easy to use, super clean, and it sounds great. And for the second synth, it is synth plant. It looks like this, super weird, but if you go into the DNA here, you can really mess with it. And it's a lot of fun to work with. You get a lot of unique sounds from it with the mutate buttons, which you do here. works as a DNA, it's very, very funny. You have this seed in the middle. If you click it, and it does something else for every note. It's just a lot of fun to work with. It's creative, you get inspired by it, and you can go into here and do a lot of fun stuff with it. It's a creative plugin, has a lot of nice presets to it. And it sounds good, but the most important part is that it's a very inspiring plugin to work with because you never know what you're gonna get. And I think it's $100, so it's not too expensive. So for instance, we have this sound, and you can... It's crazy. <laughs> It 
It's very, very fun to work with. So the last plugin is RX7. This is the most expensive one as well. I think the advanced one is $700, but the standard is $400. We can also get the Elements one for like 40 bucks now, I think, where you also get the audio denoise repair tools, which are really, really handy. But this is probably the best full package plugin for fixing stuff. <laughs> you have a standalone version with all of the different modules where you can chain them up and stuff like that. But if you want to use it in your FL or in your DAW, you have all the separate ones as well. So what I love about this is, for instance, the time stretching is offline and it's just such a good algorithm that when you stretch, for instance, a vocal from 120 to 150 or whatever BPM, you get a much, much cleaner and better result than often in digital audio workstations where they have to be online, but this is offline so you can spend a lot more time and it's a lot heavier processing. So it just gives a better result, which can help a lot with remixes and stuff like that. But you also have pretty much everything that you need to fix stuff. You have so many tools here, denoising, de-reverb, de-essing, and so on. All of the modules are amazing. For instance, the de-esser here doesn't really need de-essing. It sounds like this, but with, for instance, Sounds very natural. It's a good algorithm for all of the things. Isotope are top of their game and they killed it with this one. So my favorite thing about it in RX7 is that when you have the waveform, you can go in and cut out select frequencies from the whole band. And it sounds amazing. Data Life did it in one of their like future music things, I think. And it's just amazing. It sounds great and it's it seems like magic to me. But I want to show you one last thing that you probably know if you know this channel, but the invisible limiter is still in my opinion, the best brick wall limiter. It's just so easy to use, it's super clean. And the updated version has a clip mode as well, which sounds amazing. It's really, really good, pretty cheap, and I think that's it for the list. Please let me know what your favorite plugins are. I would love to test them all out pretty much because I just love plugins. Um, but I hope you have an amazing day. See you guys soon.